stuff yet. She's now checking it out. She says, oh, what's New Zealand like? Are they really awake over there? And I'm like, you need to listen to the Vinnie Eastwood show. It, it's like he's going through the same thing over there. But one in five million actually sounds worse, Vinny, than what <laughs> I went through in Portland. Because Portland's only the city of, uh, of uh, well, the metro area is about a million, million and a half. And there is, there is a guy on the air who used to be a friend of mine. His name is Clyde Lewis of Ground Zero Radio. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, he's out there on some issues, but he's a great mind. Mm. He's talking to nearly the whole city on one of the biggest talk stations uh, in the whole metro area. The tide has shifted, and people are asking questions in the city that I'm from more than they seem to have asked when I was there. So, you know, even though it seems like we're in a zombie ac- apocalypse, I'm constantly shocked at, at just how aware the world seems to be. Well, become. apocalypse means the um, the revealing of great truth, ironically enough. We'll be right back after the break with Alex Ansari outside the box, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Ansari. Vinny Eastwood is going to be uh, resetting his computer. And uh, I'm going to continue talking a little bit about a, a few things, a little bit about my early years and um, some of the things that I've experienced early, early on. But, um, you know, I was, I was uh, discussing my early years early on, and I know there's, there's different people that are coming in to what we call the truth movement. I cannot place enough emphasis on the value of basically the medium that I got started on, which was community access television. And even though it seems like we're facing greater and greater threats to free speech, uh, it, it seems that every year we read about, we read about another threat to the Internet It seems that things at times almost get worse on our local community radio stations. Anytime they have partnerships with, uh, uh, you know, NPR uh, and other federally supported and directed uh, news media organizations, it's difficult in this day and age. But, you know, there are certain mediums, access television, if you have a medium like that. That's what I use from the year 2004 to the year 2011 to reach people that normally don't look for information in shows like this. They just find it accidentally. And so the power of synchronicity can literally, if you will, take over. And you might be talking about a certain issue or showing a documentary, turning in a documentary, downloading a video from YouTube. Go to keepvid.com, download that MP3 in full quality, and take that information. Uh, It may be about chemtrails. It may be about Agenda 21. It may be about fluoride in your local uh, water supply. Maybe you found someone on YouTube from your community that is that is your own community's Mr. News. Do those people a favor. Take that information that relates to local information in your local community and share that on Access Television or send it to the news stations. But um, I cannot place enough emphasis on the medium that I got started um, sharing my perspectives. Now, I've never thought about myself as a big shot or someone that's better than other people, and I've never taken voice lessons for anything. In fact, I make plenty of mistakes, and I'm not a perfect person. But I've been asked quite often, where did I get my education? Um, what school did I go to to learn how to do this? And the truth is, if you have a passion for something, if you have a willingness to do the work that it takes to get a message out, to, to plant the seeds... Because once you plant a seed, once someone's heard something, they cannot unhear something. Whatever it is, if you have the drive, if you have the passion, if you have the motivation, you know, there's a lot of things you can do even as a listener. And that's what I am. I'm someone that at one point was just a listener, someone that used to go down to um, to Clyde Lewis's uh, get-togethers. He would have these talks. We would talk about UFOs, conspiracies, you know, and different topics at a bar in Portland, Oregon. And I remember the year was 2002, 2003, and that was my family. That was my community. And then once I realized, wait a minute, if there's a local community uh, TV station that's going to let a man uh, under the guise of free speech run around naked, his name was Jim Spag for anyone into Portland Access, <laughs> Portland Cable Access history. He pushed the envelope of free speech. And I was thinking to myself, you know, there's definitely questions that need to be raised about 9-11, um, and many, many other things. The surveillance society, I still remember what it was like for um, people to get surprised when I would say that, you know, we are moving into some sort of a 1984 Orwellian surveillance society. And people would say that that was bullcrap at that time. And there was denial. You know, at one point, I want to make a whole film about surveillance, and I'm glad the ones that have been made have been made because I no longer want to make a film about surveillance. 
Now I want to make a film about China and how they're closely linked to the U.S., which I'll talk about later with Vinny. But Vinny, are you there? And and it, it looks like Vincent is still is still um, not with us. Aha! Looks like we must have been talking about some heavy content. Mm, no. <laughs> well, see, you see, this this that's one of the things that really uh, uh, bugs me about being a truther is that everybody th- assumes that just because you're uh, you're doing a radio show or whatever that all the technical issues are the uh, result of the new world order as opposed to your own incompetence. I know, and I really said that sarcastically. Oh, I, I get tired of, of hearing of hearing those things, but well, yeah, there's the, we we definitely need to start. And you, you said the other day, I believe that that you lost some of your contacts on Facebook. Is that true, Vincent? I, I lost everything on Facebook, basically all my uh, all my groups, all the uh, all the things that I was admin of. You can turn your webcam on now, by the way. I think we've got it all fixed. Well, I'm I'm sorry for that, but it's just all the more reason why we've got to start uh, keeping backups of our contacts. Yeah, you know, same thing goes for those that have developed close relationships with people on Facebook. You know, I guess it's been a long time, Vincent, since since we've mailed each other anything, since since we've written emails. I don't get that many emails anymore. Everything is on Facebook, yeah. and I've conformed. I'm okay with it, but I'm going to be vocal and say we've conformed to it. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves and be pissed off if someone's account just disappears overnight. Yeah, um, it's not our website. The free speech argument doesn't apply to Facebook. That's true. It's a it's a it's a kind of domineering factor, and um, a lot of the social networking uh, and hits to people's websites and so on and so forth are now through Facebook. So they've, I mean, to to have that kind of a platform um, is a lot of power, a lot of control. Um, and it's come out recently that the NSA is doing Facebook data mining. Uh, so, you know, I I say let them watch, though. You know, I mean, if, if they're going to watch me right. on Facebook, I'm just going to show them something freaky, you know, like me getting uh, thousands upon thousands of likes on whatever. Absolutely. And uh, I believe the, the founder of Facebook, he recently had his account hacked and seen into the story on this. The guy that did it is in Gaza. So someone in Gaza with a limited access to technology figured out a code or something, and he became a local celebrity out of it. Hopefully, he'll get a job. He was hoping Facebook would give him a job, but they're like, "No, we don't. We don't. We're not interested in having having." And so then a bunch of hackers have been contacting him. But I bring that up to say, if that can happen to him, um, and, and if he said years ago, Facebook users are effing morons for just posting voluntarily information, take that to heart. What he said about people that will post it voluntarily and what happened to him. Now he's mad along with the founder of, of, of Yahoo. And they did a, some sort of a conference relating to the NSA this week where they are now saying they're very upset with all of this. I'm wondering where were they a few years ago? Why are they just now saying that they're upset with the NSA? Mm. We've been told all this time Facebook's been working with the CIA. They, it seems like uh, Zuckerberg forgot CIA. Well, it's uh, DARPA, wasn't it? The uh, the Defense Advanced right. uh, Research Projects Agency, and uh, they they're responsible for a lot of very very creepy draconian uh, kind of programs on the net, censored uh, technology, and and so on and so forth. Um, and there's there's a video that you can watch on YouTube called "What Is Facebook." Um, that outlines its connections to a lot of these very scary draconian agencies. Right. Well, what we're reading about now is not just globalization of the economy and and of so many other things. What we're seeing now is China, Russia, and the United States working together when it comes to sharing technology about um, the the people in their country. And a lot of this was going on before 9-11. We can get more into geopolitics, if you like, in the second hour or in this hour. But one of the things that I've been discussing on my show, especially since 2007, is that, you know, this surveillance network that we talk about is not just some something based in um, Western Europe or the United States or something that's being hatched at the Bilderberg Group. I perceive a larger network that involves all these guys and uh, that there is a larger network that we identify to be the new world order that exists far outside of Bilderberg. So I think that there's more information, documentation coming to back up these claims. Um, We can read now about Russian special forces being invited to Colorado as recently as last year to take part in a drill. And there was another headline a few months ago about um, 
certain aspects of the Russian military or, or peacekeeping forces or whatnot, something along those lines, working with FEMA and disaster response organizations, very creepy stuff. And here's something else for any of your Texas listeners. There is a, a company called Huawei. They make cell phones. They're like Verizon. They're like the Verizon of China. This company has already been highlighted by the Pentagon as being one of the top suspects in cyber attacks against the United States. We do know that the CIA manufactures some of these threats, but we do know some of them are actually real and that some of us have been attacked. You have Jack Blood on quite a bit. He's been attacked by China when he was talking with Tex Mars. They tried to send him child pornography. What did Luke Kradowski say someone tried to send him? What did Stuart Rhodes say? two months ago someone tried to send him an email there's multiple reports of people getting hit with so-called attempts to send them child pornography and cyber attacks and in some cases are originating from overseas jack blood traced the ip to um halliburton in texas as well as somewhere in china all very interesting so let me get back to dallas this huawei company this cell phone company that's been highlighted as a suspect company there's a ribbon cutting ceremony where Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, is inviting them to Plano, which is like the Beverly Hills of Dallas, to set up their U.S. headquarters for this cell phone company that's involved in espionage and spying. I freaking hate Even Rick Huawei. Perry. Yeah, he's a real uh, scumbag. I was just thinking a real scumbag and, and someone that at the time that he was running for the presidency, I don't think that, that he was really running or trying. You remember some of those videos where he was behaving like he was on pills or he was drunk? I think all that no, was intentional. I didn't, I didn't see that. You didn't see that? But no. yeah, it, it was. Uh, I was watching that, and what I saw was another reenactment of what we saw with George W. Bush. Yeah. Where people act like they're retarded. They act like they don't know what they're doing, and they have no self-control, or they have no etiquette. Then in reality, they're, they're deliberately supposed to act that way. Yeah. It's just something speculate about you ever think about the possibility that they're just not acting <laughs> that is very possible and the powers that be are deliberately picking people like this for for definitely specific purposes but in the end vincent it seems like we've lost so much faith in our leaders over this decade not just in the post 9 11 world uh and this new new world order but but old new world order stuff with clinton and 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 bush uh uh, senior and Dan Quayle not knowing how to spell potato on CNN in the year 1990. It's a very famous CNN clip. You know, <laughs> the vice president can't spell potato. And I'm just like, this stuff's got to be deliberate for us to reach such an apathetic state of mind to where we're like, you know what? We want no part of any of this process. I don't know. I mean, think about what it's George worked. Carlin said. He said, this, everybody talks about politicians. Look, it's garbage in garbage out this is the best that america can produce now right yeah i love george carlin it's funny when you go into youtube and type in new world order comedy which i do every now and then to get a laugh when i need it in relation to all this craziness going on he pops up right away and i hope in our generation vincent that we see more bill hicks come to the surface and also more radio hosts like yourself that have a natural sense of humor not an artificial sense of humor and uh, that's what we need to see because Bill Hicks and what he's done, it still lives on, even though he's no longer with us. His spirit still lives on. Mm. So he was I hope to see more people like that. He was one of my chief inspirations, actually. Uh, a yeah. friend, of, friend of mine introduced me uh, to him when I was at university, and um, I think that was back in uh, 2003, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that was like uh, seven, uh, like nine, ne nearly ten years after his death. I, I've, I found right. out about him for the first time kind of thing. And that inspiration kind of still lives on in me. Now, now isn't, that, isn't that great? I mean, and, and this is why I like um, the modern technology that we've got now with the recording devices and so on and so forth. Because I've had so many amazing conversations with people over the years. Had those not been recorded, they would have just disappeared into, into, into half-winced memories and, and so on and so forth. And other people wouldn't be, have been able to share in those conversations. Other people wouldn't have been able to hear or see or feel the comedy of Bill Hicks kind of thing. And, and you know, as much as technology can enslave us, it can also really, really free us and inspire us. Yes, because what I think we're ultimately doing, Vincent, is healing. We're not just speaking. We're not just educating. And this is not uh, anything to do with ego. I see in others. I see it myself. 
And sometimes we can become out of balance if we're compulsive healers and we're running around trying to fix everything and, quote, save the world. 